First of all, we have to test the things, then we have to provide assurance that yes, we have checked it and everything is found to be in order or there are certain anomalies or certain gaps for which we will be issuing the audit report and we will be providing those these gaps as an observation. We will also be providing what all impact these observations carry and how what is the root cause of it, why these observations are there. What are the different reasons why we, we, we come up with these observations? And the last thing is the way to correct these errors, right? Or we can say the recommendations, right? Understood? Number one, in the assurance, we do the testing. In the consulting, we provide the advice, right? We, we do the hand holding. In the consulting, in the assurance, nature and scope will be decided by the journal auditor. In our consulting, nature and scope is decided by the engagement client. In the assurance, the there are the three parties. In the assure, in the consulting, there is only two parties. So these are the three key differences you have to keep in your mind. Why? This is what we have understood from the purpose of internal audit activity. So what we have, what is the purpose? To provide the assurance activity and to provide the consulting activity. This is a document which consists of all these things, purpose, authority and responsibility of an internal audit activity. So this is a document which is prepared by the audit department, right? Or normally we can call it, it is prepared by the audit department and reviewed by the chief audit executive or I can say head of the internal audit department, right? We ask the board of director to approve this charter, board of directors approval, right? We ask board of director to approve this charter so that whenever we will be doing an activity, if we found any problem, we can ask management, can you please see this charter? This is our authority, you cannot restrict it. So the board of director adopts a formal charter that grants sufficient authority to a chief audit executive and the internal audit activity so that they can perform their work freely and effectively. The internal audit activity should be empowered to require auditee to grant access to all records, to all personal, all kind of the people you can speak with. You will, you will be having access to all physical properties relevant to the performance of every engagement. Right? In every engagement, you may be requiring different person to do the to be uh, to be concerned. You may be requiring different places to visit. You may be requiring different documents to be verified. So this authority as per internal audit charter grants you that sufficient authority that management cannot deny it, cannot restrict it. So the very, very important point here we have to understand. This is the primarily activity done by the board of directors. The board of directors issue a formal char charter which gives us the sufficient authority so that we can perform the work in a right middle. A very very important point. Final approval of the charter reside with the board. Final approval of the charter reside with the board. Which of the following party is the most appropriate party to approve the charter for formally or finally? Board. Right? Management? No. Chief Audit Executive, no. Internal Auditor, no. Statutory Auditor, no. Only and only board carry that responsibility or authority to approve the charter. Clear?